This is Market Pulse. Right now, we're picking up the pulse of the day. David Olujimi, financial markets analyst with Naira Metrics, joins me now. We're beginning with fixed incomes. Great to have you in, David. Hi, good, e good, good evening, Joanna. Yes, good afternoon, good evening. CBN, we know the latest T-Bills auction results from Wednesday are out. And aside the substantial participation that we also noticed uh, that the total amount, we also noticed that the total amount offered and amount allotted was significantly lower uh, than in previous outings. What does this uh, signal about how the CBN is uh, shifting uh, in its approach with these auctions? So basically, what we saw was that the amount was was quite high. It was just an increase from the last time. However, compared to what has been over since the start of this year, we've seen a decline. And the reason, one of the reasons, one of the things I can trace it to is the fact that the bank is trying to be cautious in their approach to treasury bills, considering that they are raising funds for the government. We've, we've noted on this show about the immense interest rates interest rate liabilities that the auctions are racking for the government. We've seen 20%, 22%, now we're at 20. This one was just 21.89%. We're seeing these rates racking up, and um, we've not put a figure to everything yet, but we'll be seeing interest rate payments of over a trillion naira hmm. just on treasury bills issued between January to August. That's just on the interest. So we are seeing the we are seeing the CBN trying to take a cautious approach to the issuance of T bills in recent times. So like last like yesterday, we saw them we saw them sell far less of mm. what they usually sell. Normally they used to sell more of the one in a, in 364 day bill, but we've seen a decline from what it was in July. All right. Essentially. All right. Okay. Just in a cautious approach. Mm -hmm. So a more cautious approach from the CBN. But we also know that in past auctions, yeah. when it comes to the investor side of the in past auctions, we've seen preference for long-term securities reflected. But looking at the results from the latest auction, um, there appears to be a change, a shift there. Let us a bit into how investors' appetite is changing uh, towards Nigerian Treasury bills uh, when it comes to the duration they're willing to hold and what's driving the shift. So basically, one thing that is going to one thing that we're basically seeing is we're seeing a situation where um, the um, the the rate the yield rate is not matching up with the benchmark rates in the country. We're having so basically all our treasury bills are giving negative real returns when mm. you when you match them against a benchmark rate and when you match them against inflation, inflation. it's even worse. We're having inflation of 33.95 percent, and the government is offering treasury bills at 21.89 hmm. percent. That is, if you do the mathematics, that's about four, that's about uh, twelve percent. That's about twelve percent negative real returns. That's mm. quite a lot for investors. Right. And we've been seeing a situation where normally we have our pension fund administrators as some of the highest uh, bidders for some of the highest bidders in the primary auction, in the primary treasury bill auction. But we've been seeing a situation where questions have been raised about the returns private of these PFAs and some of them are trying to backtrack and trying to sort out mm. how they are going to invest. We are seeing right. a situation where I think mm. some of them want to push their funds into alternative asset classes. And mm. plus, we also have all of these capital raises going on in the market. We've seen where at the moment, capital raises going on in the market are, is up to the tune of 1.2 trillion. This 1.2 trillion is going to come from somewhere in the Nigerian in the Nigerian financial space. The liquidity is going to come from from here. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like some of those liquidity that we we'll see diverting to treasury bills, I've seen them diverting to the capital market. Okay. Into but our capital raises, rather. Right mm. All right. So thank you so much for that. And of course, interest rates are continuing to chase, as you have you know pointed out, inflation uh, at this point. But let's step out of uh, Nigeria for a moment. Ethiopia, they have made a lot of sturdy moves of, of late, right? Uh, and uh, it's all part of the yeah. president's um, push to open up the country to greater private investment. We've seen them recently float their currency, but the latest is the establishment of local bores. Ethiopia's security exchange is expected to start operations in October. But for a country which is heavily controlled by the state, what are your expectations and thoughts on this development? So some of the so one thing with Ethiopia that we have to understand is that one thing with Ethiopia that we have to understand is that Ethiopia is the second largest economy is the is what did I say is the largest second largest 
um, second most populous country in Africa, basically. <laughs> so we have a situation where this country, their population and their economy does not match. Mm-hmm. Ethiopia is, is like a lagging economy. But in recent years, we've been seeing them trying to make moves, growth moves. So in recent years, we've been seeing Ethiopia become like some of the fastest growing economy, like one of the fastest growing economy in Africa, ranking among the top fastest growing economies in the world. And now the government is now trying to make moves. Now they are in a situation where they have some debt crisis. And I think having to deal with liabilities of having to control enterprises like telecoms, oil and gas, having to control like the very basic services that people in your country need on the government, I think is weighing on them quite a bit. So we've seen them try to take Ethio Telecom, that is the Ethiopian um, state-owned telecommunication company, and most used telecoms service in Ethiopia. We've, tried, we've seen them try to take those companies to the boss and say, okay, now we are ready. If you have money, come and invest. Come and take stake in these companies, and while and over a period of time, probably see them. We we'll probably see Ethiopia de, um, de, deviate from a state-run economy, something into a more mixed economy, and probably I don't know, maybe we'll into see, a capitalist yeah. economy. We'll see but how they move into trying to push their growth plan, their economic growth plan. Yeah, we'll see how they morph into that. Uh, of course, October is a set date, so we'll be tracking that as well. Uh, thank you so much, David Olujimi. Stay with me. Uh, up next, of course, we're heading for Spotlight. Uh, we're spotlighting what's going on uh, on the NGX. We know that so much is changing, and you know, a lot is being compared to, you know, looking at what's happening with devaluation in the NGX, still among, is the NGX, I beg your pardon, still among the top five largest stock markets in Africa? What has as narrow devaluation changed on the stock exchanges, uh, on the stock exchange. More on this after the break. You're still tuned in to Market Pulse, uh, where we're spotlighting uh, specifically the NGX once again, about one year after the move by the central bank to float the Naira and achieve a unified exchange rate. Market capitalization of the NGX has declined by $27.8 billion. Uh, the, less than two weeks after the, uh, assuming the presence, we know, uh, the presence, we know that the president uh, moved the CBN to unify the exchange rates in the parallel and official markets. Uh, this led to depreciation of the value of the Naira uh, on June 9th, 2023 from 465 to 759, uh, 756 naira to the dollar, and we've tracked that spiral ever since. But joining me now to trail the performance of the NGX under a unified exchange rate system is financial markets analyst uh, David Olujimi. Great to have you back in, David. Yeah, great to be back again. All right, share with us more details. First, why should we be looking at the NGX's performance in dollar terms, right? Why is it important that, you know, we're bringing that whole FX element into the conversation? So one thing is the reason why we look at some of these, why we track it in um, in dollar terms is because of the kind, because it's a capital market. It's a market where we want dollars to come in from all over the world. If we were an isolated country, like we just spoke about Ethiopia, Ethiopia is quite an isolated country. They feel like they are doing good because they track everything in their local currency, Ethiopian beer. But it's not the case with us. We need foreign participation in our markets, like we used to have a time before. We want to have foreign participation in our market. So foreign participants are always looking at, they are not tracking our, our market in Naira value. They don't mm. look at it. In, when you try to get institutional investors from the US or let's say Dubai or anything, nobody is looking at. Everybody is trying to track what's the real return? What's the real return in the dollar term? Because that's like the global currency, that, that's like the universal currency. So it's just a case of we are operating in the, we are operating in the mm. big waters. Okay. We have to also play okay. according to the big, uh, the we have big to dogs. Yeah. According to the rules. Yeah. So, so let's get into it, right? How has the NGX fared since the NARA devaluation in terms of market capitalization? So basically, one thing that happened was that we see a situation where um, while the market, while the market on the, the market took a hit, basically in dollar term, on the first day, on the first day, I think that was June 9th, the devaluation thing happened. The we moved from 465, we moved to 657. Market lost about 20 billion dollars of its value. Then 
Further, on that same day, we saw the market appreciate by about 1.5%. That was the highest gain that the market got. That, the, that was the highest that the market appreciated in a day. So people have the opinion that we'll see the market normalize of the analysts. I mean, people have the opinion that we'll see the market normalize in the coming days. And we're seeing the market normalize from $44 billion. We saw the market even hit a market cap of $60 billion in January of this year until different factors began to kick in. We began to see a capitalization announcement that affected banking stocks. We began to see, more recently, we've been seeing the windfall tax. So basically, we've now come to a steady, we've come to a steady point where um, investors are like, okay, this is the state of the market. I don't really need to put... Now, we now have a situation where we have more Forex outflow from that NGX mm -hmm. than Forex inflow. Because while we look at it as an emerging market, some I, I guess some of the big dogs are looking at it like this is a cash out point. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's it's um, in dollar terms, it's not being very palatable. Positive. But when we see the listing of some of the, when we see we are looking at the listings of potential listings of things like Dango Terrifying. However, that is also that is also subject yeah. to some of the. There's a lot going on. The same happened right. on mm -hmm. Then we also see recapitalization move. The one of the reasons why it's important to track the market in dollars is because of things like recapitalization. The banks need a lot of capital that's going to be coming from outside the country into their into the NGX. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the, these guys want to know what is the what 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 real return can I get from this move? Yeah. So yeah, that is um if we see the if we see the drama on Dangote refinery subsidy sub side, then we I, I guess that we're going to see we're going to see some big moves. Or Dangote Dangote may also decide to list this fertilizer plant, which is valued around five billion dollars right now. That's mm. a huge push to that market. Yeah, and you know, you, you've sort of answered the next question I wanted to, the direction I wanted to go with the conversation when it comes to the points of view of foreign investors who are taking returns in US dollars and, you know, uh, euros, right? What's their point of view seeing what's happening? This, so from what you're saying, this is a, an opportunity to exit the market across, obviously this is happening across Africa, right? Uh, we're seeing emerging markets come up with different economic reforms, devaluing their currency and so on and so forth. So what's the point of view of a typical investor who's taking returns uh, in US dollars and uh, euros? So basically one thing that's there is that I feel like our days of nerve volatility are over. I, I, I hope so, I believe so. And this of near volatility is over. So I think now the investors can really look at the market for the real value that it's worth. So um, uh, if we have a market where we know that, okay, the market cap is at this. But another thing, another problem that we have right now in the market that may really affect the way foreign investors look at the market is the different disturbances. Yeah, our market is quite used to be quite a it's quite volatile yes but right now we are having a lot of pushes we're having a lot of things pressuring stocks in the ngx especially when it comes to our banking stocks which are some of the most traded stocks which are some of the most active stocks in our market banking stocks are traded like every day we see the data is every day trade so the trading volume on banking stocks is quite high, but when we are seeing all these disturbances, the disturbances on banking stocks have seen some of our banking stocks track back to their 2014 level. This mm. is not good news. This is not this is not scintillating for a foreign investor Obviously. who is trying to put it, who is trying to put his dollars into a naira market in a situation where the volat the the question of the volatility of naira has not been fully answered. All right, David. So, um, the way mm. we would say foreign. We well, also foreign investors are looking at it. It's a case of, um, I think they're trying to be careful. Plus, yes. we've been seeing a lot of, forex, like I said in the beginning, a lot of forex outlook telling okay. us that so, these guys are looking at it. That they, I think we have a lot of day traders, before, foreign before, day traders who are coming to the market and exiting. All right, David. All right, David. Before I let you go, where does the NGX stand now on ranking of largest stocks in Africa? With everything that's happening, we're number largest six. stock market. Mm. So the N the NGX is at number six. Some, in the, in the we're ranking. no longer top six. five. Number right. one is yeah no no. All right.
All right. Number thank six. you. Thank you very much, uh, David Olujimi, financial markets analyst with Narimetrics, uh, for that breakdown. Uh, Africa markets, we yeah, know okay. that, um, again, it's a mixed performance, but that's as much as we can take on the show for today and the week, right? Uh, so it's pretty much a wrap. Enjoy your earnings, um, but not all of it, obviously. Save some for you know reinvestment and grow your portfolio. Stay safe this weekend. We will continue to track stories driving the markets. 4 p.m. West African time weekdays. Market Pulse here on New Central in partnership with Narrow Metrics. Uh, we're wrapping things up, of course, with the global markets.